To understand the number e, it will be useful to remember the formula of compound interest. The formula of compound interest says that the future value of a principal it will be equal to that principal multiplied by 1 plus r over m to the power n. When r is the interest, m is the number of compound periods in a year, and n is the total number of compound periods in the whole term. If the term is only one year, then these two numbers will be the same. So the number of compound periods per year will be the same of the number of compound periods, the total number of compound periods. So I can write, in case that we have only one year, I can write here m and m, or n and n. Let's use n, that is the common letter that people use. So the future value will be the principal multiplied by 1 plus r over n to the power n in one year. We are going to analyze what happens if we deposit just one dollar at a hundred percent interest. So when r equal one. So in this case, the formula will be just one plus one over n to the power n. Let's analyze first what happens with one dollar at hundred percent interest in one year if this is compounded n times per year. So the future value will be a function of the number of compound periods. And we can write better f of n equal 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. And what I'm going to see is what happens when n increases. So, for example, what happens if there is only one compound period? We know that the greater the number of compound periods, the bigger will be the future value. So let's see what happens if n increases indefinitely. So we have n and we have f of n. What happens, for example, if n equal 1? If n equal 1, if we have the function will be f of 1. 1 plus 1 over 1 to the power 1. So this is 1 plus 1, 2 to the power 1 will be 2. So let's see what happens if n equal 2. So if this compound in a semi-annual base. So, so let's see what happens if n equal 2. So we have here 2 and then here 2 also. So the, the function will be 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power 2. So it will be 1 plus 1 half, 1.5 to the power 2 will be 2.25. So the value here will be 2.25. So it's bigger, has increased. So we are thinking at that moment, oh, if that compound many times, that will be increasing indefinitely, but that's not true. So let's see what happens if this compound quarterly, four times per year. So let's have here four, then the formula will be one plus one over four to the power four, and we can use a calculator and notice that this is 2.4414. Evidently increase, but not so much now. Let's see what happens if this compound, not every quarter, but every month. So what happens if the compound periods are 12? So let's see 12, then the formula will be 1 plus 1 over 12 to the power 12. Again, use a calculator and you will notice that the answer will be 2.6134. So again, there was an increase and now a little lower. So let's see if that compound now every day so 365 times in a year, not in a leap year, in a normal year, 365 in a usual year, 365, so it will be 365 compound periods, so the n here will be 365, and to the power 365, again, I use a calculator, and I noted that the answer will be 2.71457. Now, the increase was, was of only one time, so the increase is not so big now. And what happens if this compound every hour? So what happens if you put one dollar and the bank is compounding the interest every hour? How much you have at the end of one year period? So we'll have 365 multiplied by 24. That will be 8,760. So 8,760 times per year. So that will be in the formula. Then we have the end will be 8,760 here and here, use a calculator to compute that, 
and you will notice that the answer is 2.71A13. So it was an increase, but a, just a small increase. And it did compound every second. Multiply by 60 to know how many minutes, and again by 60 to know how many seconds in a year. So that I found that is 3,153,600. So let's see what happened if this compound 3,153,600 times in a year. If that happens, so the formula will be this way now. And now if you do that, in the calculator, you will notice that the answer is almost the same, 2.71818. So there was an increase, and it will be always an increase, but the increase is so small. So we notice that when n approaches to infinite, or when, when n increases indefinitely, the function, the value of the, of the future value, approaches to a number. This number has a name. So we put a name of this number and we call it E. So E will be the number at which Fn approaches as n approaches to infinity. And we call it E. And this E will be approximately have more decimal 2.7181a. So we have that actually the E, the number that we know, is the limit as n approaches to infinite of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. We can say that e is the future value of each dollar after one year invested at 100% and compounded every instant. You can or we can prove that if the compound interest is different than 100, if the compound interest is r, then the formula will be changing to e to the power r. So if this is r is 20%, if this is 0 0.20, it will be e to the power 0 0.20. If the compound interest is 5%, the future value of this dollar will be e to the power 0 0.05. The number e then, we can say that is the future value of one dollar invested at 100%, compounded every instant. If the interest is different than 100%, we just get this number e to the power the interest. So e is the very important constant. e to the power r is the future value of each dollar after one year invested at r and compounded every instant, a compounded infinite number of times. So in summary, number e is actually the limit as n approaches to infinite of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. If we want to see what is e using a software, we can use, for example, GeoGebra and type the function f of n equal 1 plus 1 over n to the power n and just compute the value of the function when n is very big. So here I have evaluated f this function f of n when n equal a hundred millions. And I notice that the value is 2.718281.8. This is an approximation of e. Obviously, for a larger n, the number will be closer to number e. So this is rounded to seven decimals. It will be 2.718281.8. And this will be an important constant in mathematics. And you know that it's coming from the future value of one dollar when the rate of interest is 100% and the money is one year deposited. So this will be help you because this will be a real number. It's actually an irrational real number so it defines the function. The function will be f of x equal e to the power x. So f of x equal e to the power x. This is called the exponential function. But the graph of f of x satisfies all the property of any exponential function. e to the power 0, for example, is number 1. 
this will be an increasing function, you will notice that later. You can use GeoGebra to get the graph, and you will notice that the image of zero, it will be one. So e to the power zero will be one. And here I have computed e to the power one. So what happened if x equal one is 2.7182817. So this is actually the value of e. F four, that it will be e to the power four, and it will be 54, 59, 81, et cetera. This is definitely an increasing function that we're going to see later. Uh, later, we're gonna see a proof of that. And here we, I have computed also e to the power five. Obviously we can compute the e to any power. So we know that even the power could be negative and the power is negative, the number will be a smaller. The value of the function will be a smaller. It's possible to use a calculator to compute this e to each power. So the domain of the function will be the set of the real number. There is no real number that cannot be plugged into this function. So e to the power whatever number will be okay. So e to the power negative two, for example, is 0 0.3353. You can use a calculator to compute it or you can use your algebra. You just type e to the power negative two. In Excel, you can type equal exponential of minus two in bracket the argument, remember, and press enter. The Excel will give you the answer, 0 0.1353, with more decimal for sure. If you have R, you can type exponential minus two with the with, and press enter. In GeoGebra, for example, we can type e to the power, and this is the key that we use for the power, and minus two. So when you type this to the power, GeoGebra immediately moves to the top of the number and then you can you can type to the top of the number minus two and type enter, obviously. And you should observe that the limit as X approaches to minus infinite, it will be zero. So this number is smaller and smaller as X approaches to minus infinite. So the more the value to the left of x, the value of the function is smaller and approaches to zero. The inverse of the exponential function is called the natural logarithm function. So the natural logarithm of a number is the power you need to raise this e to get that number. For example, if we have x equal e to the power y, so this y will be the logarithm, the natural logarithm of this x. So this y will be the natural logarithm of x. And it's possible to use again a calculator to compute the natural logarithm to every positive number. So now the number need to be positive to have a logarithm. And this is obvious because the value of e to the power of y are always positive. So this x needs to be positive. So only the positive number will have a, log a natural logarithm. Well, if you are using Excel, you type ln of two, for example, if you want to compute the natural logarithm of two, you need to type the equal signs at the beginning and press enter. So Excel will give you the value of this natural logarithm of two. If you have R, then you type log of two. So log of two and press enter and you get the natural logarithm. Observe that this is completely different. And in GeoGebra, you type ln of two. So in bracket, the argument in each of the cases, then press enter and GeoGebra will give you the value. So for example, here I get the function, I define in GeoGebra the function f of x equal the natural logarithm of x and now I can type f of two or f of three, depending with natural logarithm I want to compute. So observe then here that the limit at n approaches to infinite, it will be infinite. So it means that the value of the lo natural logarithm, it will be increasing indefinitely as n increasing indefinitely. So it's not approaching to any number. So it could be as bigger as you want. The only that you need to do is 
find a larger x to get a larger natural logarithm. And also, the limit at x approach to zero from the right, so it will be minus infinite. So this will be decreasing indefinitely as x approaches to zero from the right. And of course, we cannot approach to zero from the left in this case, because x cannot take negative value. 